Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Star Trek and Chill. It is your favorite time of the week. It's Friday. It's time to kick off those shoes, throw off that shirt, anything that's cumbersome. Go nuts. <laughs> grab kick yourself a beverage. <laughs> it's Friday. They you can. Don't. Yeah, they're we just can. in the live chat. Yeah. No, we can. We we'll get not. demonetized. We do donuts? not. We kick off our shoes and we stop there. Uh, you grab know a us. beverage, everybody. Hang out. We're gonna time. We're gonna talk about Star Trek. We're gonna chill. It's time to have a great evening together. Mm. Oh, Section Thirty One's in the news. They had a rap party. There's crazy stuff going on there. Lots to talk about. Lots to chill about. Hey, everybody. Melissa Longo is here. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> also, OG podcaster Charlene Schmidt. Yo, so I missed you all so much. It's we been too you. long. Oh my god! Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, the walking exclamation point. Doctor Anne Marie Siegel is here out in space. <laughs> I'm wearing my sweatshirt from seventh grade. But <laughs> it's from wow. You still have it, and it still Classic. fits. That's amazing. That is amazing. Also, we've got an incredible paintress who has a special story to share with all of us in a moment. It's Jenny R. Johnson. Hello. Ooh, can't wait to hear it. Everybody at home, you'll never guess which Star Trek actor Jenny R. Johnson met last night. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and I can guess. Uh, oh, by the way, if you want the shirt I'm wearing or Melissa's wearing or Charlene Schmidt is wearing... Uh, you can get all these at the uh, Star Trek and Chill online store. You can click the link below that's in the description box below. Just click that link, Star Trek and Chill. Get your very own Bozeman Phoenixes, Ryza and Chill, Prune Juice and Chill in any color, any size, whatever you want. Go nuts. It's a lot of fun. Be the envy of your friends. Let's say hello to our pals, the Matt Boardman in the live chat, Lucia Raz out in Brazil, KL Bliss. Anne Marie, don't you have one of her pillows? Yes, I have the Prodigy one. The one. Ooh. Cute. A lot of oh fun. So check her out at conventions for sure. Bliss Pillow. Rashid, what's up? Back of the head. He says, Happy birthday, William Shatner. He knows he was there. Mm -hmm. And okay. Iverson. Yeah. What's up? Dave Gregory, uh, EGT Entertainment. May Borello, Chuck A., John Davis. We see all of you. Let's have some fun and get into this. That was a lot to say at first, but <laughs> ew. Glenn Iverson says, strips down to underwear and begins parading around. I thought go he was- Go for I, it. I, I just word the word, good time. read the word parade, and I thought he meant like he's going to go to a parade. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what sort of parade, if that's permitted or not. <clears throat> Why do I have Sometimes. a mental image of John Billingsley in my head? Mm. <laughs> and no pants. <laughs> Does he do it? <laughs> it has. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Rick Hernandez? What's up, War Dog Heim? Rose Kirby out in Derby in the UK. Zanzas, hello. All right. Jenny R. Johnson, can you please share with the rest of the class what you're drinking today? And everybody at home, oh, let us know what yeah. are you drinking on this fine springtime finally friday i mean once again i've been drinking this all winter because it's the winter non-alcoholic mulled cider from Fowork ciders in nova scotia and it's delicious and mm. winter is long cider. here mm. winter has come winter is back <laughs> yeah oh is it in uh, nova scotia yeah, we had the spring of deception, and now we're back to winter again. Spring oh, of deception. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fuzzy Malone in the live chat says, Melissa and Ryan, what's up? It's Aaron Malone. We remember him, Hi. a.k.a. Bakersfield First Avenger. We know him oh. all over California Central Valley. Good to see you, pal. Uh, Rico E. Anderson and I ate at his restaurant a few years back and had the time of our lives. Good dude. Nice. What's up, Aaron? Nice. Anne Marie, what are you drinking? Champagne. Ooh, what's the occasion? Um, I got good news that I can't say more right now. Okay. Maybe maybe after a couple glasses, she will. <laughs> Drink up, Anne-Marie. 
<laughs> She's like, I got good news. I got a bottle of champagne. Well, the thing is, I'm at my parents' house. And when my piano teacher passed away at his funeral, like the like everybody got a bottle to take home with them. So it's just been in my closet. And then I got good news. And I was like, this is the time to break it up. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm It'll alone. Blow- like okay i'll drink champagne eat rubbish and watch tv <laughs> the best night alone yeah. rubbish kale <laughs> bliss kale bliss knows how to live she says she's having dark chocolate caramels and port five port's my favorite wow, nice char what are you drinking today I just have ginger ale because i was doing my babylon five chat right before this and had no time to even go downstairs. I have a mocktail <laughs> that I was going to do a show and tell with and try oh. for the first time. It's been sitting in my fridge for weeks because I've been absent from Trek and Chill. Um, but we'll it'll wait. have to wait till next time. Hmm. Okay. I'll save it for the next ginger week. ginger ale is very on brand. It's good. Yeah, ginger ale is great. I love it. I love ginger ale too. Yeah, me too. And ginger beer. Mm. Mm. Refreshing. See. Speaking of beer, what about you, Melissa? What are you drinking? I'm drinking this non-beer. Um, that is <laughs> um, blueberry lemonade sparkling water. That is pretty. And actually, uh, I think I'm masking the taste because I've been downing halls. So <laughs> that's oh, halls no. is really the only thing I can taste at the moment. <laughs> So it tastes like cough syrup then. <laughs> it tastes like menthol, which I'm okay with because I, I enjoy menthol very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. But I'm sorry you have to take the hauls. I was there last week myself, so I am yeah. I'm at the tail end, so yeah. Good. <clears throat> oh, Anne-Marie just f- disappeared to- <laughs> into Europe. She just went Whoa. into Europe. <laughs> <laughs> <Zoom>. <laughs> Western no, I'm trying Europe. to get more light. It's like every, this place is usually so well lit, but everywhere I go, darkness follows. Like apparently for light. Weren't you? Yeah, I, that's because you're in space. Well, because, like it, it's not <laughs> all so It's very cloudy. Yeah. Yeah, weren't you in a snowstorm? Well, it ended up only being like four inches, and then it got warmer. But it was so oh. Oh. only so four jealous. inches. I'm so jealous. I love snow. I know. Also, that snow rise is amazing. So good in that like berry color. Love that. Huh? Mm-hmm. The rise and chill shirt looks so good in the berry color. Yeah. It does. Ooh, it does. It does. Mm. Pop. I, I was thinking color. Melissa's drink reminded me because I've had that one before blueberry and lemonade or blueberry lemonade, something like that. It reminded me of two candies the Alexander the Grapes, even though that's grape and not blueberry. <laughs> And the lemon heads. Oh, Ooh, those guys. Yeah. And the red hots and the cherry yes. clan. I think that was my favorite. Oh, this is really good. Back of the Hud says, so back of the head, hung out with Clint Howard last night. Mm. That is party. so cool. Saw the That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Clint Howard was drinking ginger ale and not Tranya. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe ginger ale is Tranya. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty see if I can cool. Find I bet that, that was a hell of a show. Movie. Such yeah. a good show. Let's see if I can find uh back of the heads. Epic, Epic picture. party. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Great picture. Yeah. Here it is, everybody. Uh so Clint Howard thinks it's still the pandemic, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how everybody just let their hair grow out? Yeah. <laughs> Great picture, John. That's awesome. Sergio. Looks we good. love Sergio. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> he's a good guy. He is. And he's got Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Good for you, nice. <laughs> It's the best one. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> no bias there at all, right, Jenny? None. I've got my giant liquid death beverage. Nice. Ooh. All right. I burned it. Ooh. It's Pretty refreshing. Nice. It's left over from a uh, trek to San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. I got a big old box of them. Oh, nice. Mm. Mm. That's smart. Nice. Mm. That's so good. Making notes. You know what I like best about this stuff? This liquid death? What? The taste. When you 
What else? Is there? <laughs> I, thought right, I thought it would be the caffeine. The death metal <laughs> look of the mm-hmm. caffeine. Yeah. Last too. night at two in the morning, I watched an entire metal concert on YouTube. The sound was so good. Whoever did the sound engineering did a phenomenal job. I felt like I was there. Like it's wow. like two forty five in the morning and I'm just rocking out like I'm there. Not what show as if I was in the pit quite that extreme, but mm-hmm. it's pretty good. Wow. Great. All the benefits, <laughs> very, very, son very, of the drawback good. of being in the pit. Yeah, nobody sweat was yeah. on me. Ugh. Oh my god! <laughs> Howard has a business card. First of all, it's amazing. Second of all, David Chappelle. Oh my god! I would frame that. Except we should I do frame that? <laughs> that's, pretty- that's pretty cool. Oh my gosh! That's that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Hey, actually, but we'll <laughs> we'll talk about Star Trek now. But anybody in the live chat, this is going to be fun. If anybody can guess the band that was the metal concert that I watched last night, just make a guess in the live chat. If anybody was gets it right. Was the show last night? No, it was. No, I'm not going to say what year it was. Uh, oh. But if anybody can guess the band um, in the live chat, we'll give you I'll, I'll send you some free swag from Star Trek and chill just for fun. Nice. So let's see if oh, anybody guesses fun. that right. Do um, get to just because I want to relive it after Ooh. them. Okay. <laughs> <Darn it. laughs> I was some swag. Okay, I just sent you a message on Facebook Messenger. This is it doesn't give away any personal information about Clint Howard, but this is like Ooh. hot off the presses. Like, <laughs> and it's wow. <laughs> now, Anne Marie, can you tell everybody uh, that's watching? the brief history of Clint Howard and Star Trek, because some people may not yeah. know. Well, He's even been in all, Discovery recently, right? I know. So first of all, like famously, he is Ron Howard's brother. But they were both child actors, and he was hired, I can't remember, like he was a little kid, obviously, to be on TOS, on like the Carbon Might Mover Maneuver, which was aired, I think, I want to say it's like, mm. more within like the first five or six episodes of TOS. And so he's in that and he's like that like creepy kid who has the Tranya and then they leave Bailey with him. And then he's, mm, then he came Bailey's. back been in like five or six Star Trek live series. He's the guy in past tense who says, whoosh, I'm invisible in Deep Space Nine. And then he was back on, he's in Discovery as like a, he was in that like weird Klingon street festival market. And then he was in Strange New Worlds in episode six, Cloak of War, or whatever it was called. He was like on the planet with yeah, um, that's so good. And I, I want to say he's been in. Oh, that's four, right? That's, that's five. five. Strange New Worlds. Remember. Yeah, she yeah, I mentioned that one. Yeah, oh, okay, that was okay. the most recent one, what right? Was Enterprise or what was he? Oh, in? Enterprise. Was what was, was he on Enterprise? He was one of the Frangi, wasn't he? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. That's perfect. Yeah. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and like I never I don't I didn't remember past tense that well but I just remember like we would always hear him say wish I'm invisible because like the channel played that <laughs> so many times and then my sister and I would say that like when we're getting out of a car or something <laughs> 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 like very often in our house out of context and not even remembering like what the storyline was mm-hmm. so good. <laughs> He's so good. Nice. And like now going back as an adult and watching it, I'm like, oh my God, it's actually really powerful and like sad. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, yeah. So well done. He's just incredible. I love him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did anybody guess it right? Uh, he played Grish, the uh, Ferengi and Enterprise mm-hmm. in the episode mm-hmm. Acquisition. Yeah. Um, let me see. Mm. Has nobody had gotten it right yet when I first glanced mm. over? I so, saw some. <clears throat> Chris, I, just an, I just got sure. an interesting sorry. Go ahead, please. An interesting dispatch. Um, oh. there's um a friend of mine who is uh working on Strange New Worlds is watching right now on the Enterprise. Wow. Wait, what? Oh my- God, Lucky I know. Little jerk. Oh, <laughs> We're being up with the Enterprise right now. That's yeah. bitching. Yeah. Like, time it's for a so selfie. Fun. 
beam it in. (laughs) (laughs) If you're allowed, yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Okay, so here's here are the guesses. Uh Lincoln Park, Ramstein, Megadeth, Avenged Sevenfold, Queen's Reich, Guns and Roses, Kryptonite. Metallica, White Snake, ACDC, and other Guns N' Roses, Judas Priest, GNR, Slayer, uh, Pooper. Oh no, that's Dan B. Pooper. <laughs> like, I've never heard of Pooper. They sound pooper. pretty cool though. Um, let me see. Okay. Somebody did get it from our team though. That's it is Anne Marie guessed correct. It is Slipknot. It was. I don't even know who okay. they are. They're always talking about them. Oh my god, they're so good. They're just they <laughs> age so well. They're just getting better. They just keep. I mean, they've been around yeah. since ninety nine. Yeah. That yeah. their first yeah. album. Anyway, it was nice. slipping. Okay, Anne Marie, you get a free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get whatever you want. Anyway, so uh, everybody go check out Slipknot. They came out on the scene in nineteen ninety nine, and they've just been going nuts ever since. But this new that concert I watched was just a few months ago. It was just from a few months ago, maybe a year. No, I think it was just a few months ago. So they're still going strong. It's nuts. Amazing. Anyway. You know who else is really good live who's only gotten better with age? At least with live performances. Corn. Hmm. They were playing with System of a Down a couple years ago. Yeah. And uh, I, I wasn't expecting much of corn. I was like, oh yeah, cool. Corn will be there. That's great. No, they were awesome. They were even better than System. And I love System. Not knocking them. Yes, they're the that's how good corn was. System's the greatest ever. Well, corn, if I remember correctly, they play in drop A, right? So for those of you that play guitar, right. you know that a, the the fat is to play drop D, so that a power chord you just hold one finger over a drop D, so it's two steps lower than a regular guitar. But these guys have another string even lower than that they drop that two uh steps and so they play in drop a that's why they're so low they're like da, 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 da. They're like they're like <laughs> the lowest corn's got a really cool fun sound so Jane Powell says in in regards to us being on the enterprise too bad this isn't the main viewer <laughs> 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 yes yeah well speaking of the main viewer uh, we're going to get into section 31, but Jenny R. Johnson, you've got a story to tell about a Star Trek actor you met last night. I do. And I did. I got to go see, um, Raven Dowda, who plays Dr. Pollard on Discovery, who is a good friend of Virtual Trek Con and an all around amazing person. Um, I got to see her one woman show, <clears throat> Addicted, at uh, Neptune Theater in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Which, if you're in Halifax and you haven't gone yet, I think there are still tickets. There's two more shows. Go see it. It's freaking amazing. Um, Yeah, it's incredible. She plays, like, 11 different characters, and they're, like, real. It's crazy. She is so talented. All these different accents, and but not, like, accents. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like, they're they're real, living, breathing people. It's incredible. Right. She really dives into, like, breaking down the the stigma around um, addiction and like, you know, the, oh. the, the family generational trauma that it often comes from. Um, it's God, it's so good. Like, and it's an hour 45 and she's on constantly. Absolutely incredible. And she did a really great um, talk back after the show that was just, it was really cool. Cause, cause you know, she's done all these different characters and then all of a sudden she's like sitting there on the stage and she's like, hello. Hey, and, she's like, <laughs> and, and, and that was really nice too because it was just you know getting to see her amazing personality and really like talk about her experience um oh yeah my it gosh was, it was incredible absolutely it sounds incredible, incredible. i yeah. want to go see this show you should you should I you just gotta <laughs> hop on a plane? all the way on the other side of the continent <laughs> just hop on a plane come on over two more <laughs> oh sure i'll just grab a plane ticket head right yeah. over <laughs> be there in a few hours <laughs> i wish i wish oh my god that sounds amazing it was just yes. incredible absolutely incredible and it was like that it was a, it, it's a smaller theater so it was just like a really like very intimate very like mm. Mm, mm. Best. yeah incredible mm, so cool yeah mm. 
<laughs> so we love Raven Dowda, and I'm so glad, Jenny, that you got to meet her. She has got such great energy, and she's always been so cool with us for the Lappy Awards. You know, she's always pre-recording some presentations and she just gives like way more than we I mean we're just saying hey can you read these out and she's yeah. like I'll do better than that I will perform them <laughs> she's just like I can only imagine what her on stage must be like it must have been so much fun yeah yeah absolutely just mm, incredible and she was so excited when I mentioned my connection to you guys she was just like Oh yeah. She was like, <laughs> Ryan, I love Ryan. <laughs> She's, She's so we sweet. Love Ryan. That's cool. Yeah. She's uh, got carte blanche on our team, that's for mystery. sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What'd you say, Anne Marie? She's also on Murdoch Mysteries, one of my other favorite shows. Oh, She's amazing. So cool. All right. Awesome. So there's big news today, of course. Uh, this isn't exactly a news show, everybody, but there is some big Star Trek news that we must share with all of you. I guess I should have had it prepared, huh? Okay, while you're pulling nah. this up, I didn't realize that Michelle Yeoh was in the Wicked movie. I'm like, yes, yes, mm. yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Like, so, like, she gave the Wicked salute at the Oscars, and now this. And like, mm -hmm. her amazing pictures yeah. of Wicked. She's everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so check this out, everybody. This is a post from Trek Central. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it looks like it's a screenshot that somebody else posted, a, a regram, as the French say. And it's basically a rap party, it looks like, for Section 31, because we recognize Michelle Yeoh here. And there seemed to be a few. I used to have this shirt right here. That's nice. an awesome shirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is it an is. awesome shirt. Maybe she took it. So <laughs> now the first thing I noticed when I saw this was because this is what Star Trek fans do. Oh my God, I we, love it. We <laughs> never, we never say, them. OMG, there's this person and there's that person. And there's that person. What do Star Trek fans do when they see a collection? They go, where's... Fill in the mm. blank or where's <laughs> fill in the blank, right? They always do it's that. It's true. You have a, a group of captains together. They go, where's Archer? Yes. Where's Sonequa? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But my, I did the, I'm, I'm the same way. I looked at this and I was like, where's Ash Tyler? Where's Mary Chifa? Where's all the people that we're hoping are going to be on the show? They can't just be it parading doesn't... them out there. Spoilers. Oh. No. Huh. They got to make us think that they're not going to be in the Section 31 feature so mm. that when they do show up, we're pleasantly mm. surprised. Like, oh, thank God they're here. <laughs> that would be awesome yeah. if they were there. Wouldn't it? I'm hoping. Hoping. Yeah. yeah. Like, they, they took a shot like... with everybody, everybody. But yeah. then they took another one without them. Exactly. Yeah. Then they, that's yeah. when they put on socials. See, yeah. Do you think that they did, did it that calculatedly i mean no. i mean they are section 31 Ooh, yeah. good point mm. <laughs> oh aren't they supposed to be nice on me. the up and up and two yeah. steps ahead of everybody you're so right but i, I think, think steps ahead of people significant others who are in that picture who then posted i like <laughs> to think they wouldn't know who to leave it out and i then checked all of their instagrams of the party <laughs> and didn't spot anybody in the background who like looked familiar <laughs> Look at Anne Marie being session 31 on Instagram. I'm like, I'm like in separate parts of the big room. I just that's that that would be next level section 31. I wouldn't put it Resident past web it. crawler, man. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the guy who posted it, I'm super intrigued by him. So his like social media profile says that he's like a produce a content creator and producer. So I'm like, but his significant other is somebody who does VFX in Toronto. Mm. So like, both work on the show or just the significant other but he's like interesting because the significant mm. other her credits include discovery but it hasn't been updated for section 31 yet mm. so interesting, interesting. Oh. And then, good like, sleuth work in this picture like all the all of the outlets are saying three people sort of got announced through these posts mm -hmm. but i only got one who hadn't been announced before so i think maybe it's just like miscounting 
because maybe one, I mean, the person who's a significant other does VFX wasn't, and then also the guy who posted wasn't. So I guess that's the three. Hang on, there's more to this. I got to look at, first of all, uh, look at the comments. Yes, that Adrian one I like says, very much. I'm nice. shocked <laughs> Ash Tyler won't be in this. There well, it is. For... I love the next one. one. The next one's amazing. Am I the only one who is worried they're oh not doing God. the Vulcan live long and prosper sign correctly? And then Have I, you I, not I, seen a Vulcan I'm like, okay, this one's right. Mm -hmm. She's right. Yeah. This, I'm like, I'm not sure she's That's trying to do not, it. No, like, she's, I don't, not. she's not. She's doing it. another thing. But she yeah, okay, this one's a little well, weird. That's... It looks like they're playing no, they're, with each no, other's no, fingers. They got thumbs hooked. Yeah. There's all kinds Which of things. Which is cute. It is. And they're it's doing sarcastic this Vulcan this is... Exactly. That one's the sarcastic one. Yeah. When we yeah. have yeah. the actual the... Trek fans, this one's please kind don't of... be so and tight. Michelle Yo definitely this one's kind got of... it going exactly. on. Yeah, she did. Exactly. Or they're just semi doing some of them because it's section thirty one. They're they're, they're just, just they're having just, fun. This is like this yeah. is like twenty first century newness. Yeah, but what about this? You know, when people do well, this the, well, or people, this, people just aren't paying attention well, to what they're doing with their thumbs. You yeah, know? I mean, that's the problem. To be fair, oh, oh, they're, they're posing. <laughs> they're not worried about this that hard. Posing the opposable. <laughs> when Nichelle Nichols tried to do it, she would always go like this. Yeah. Try. <laughs> so not, <laughs> not everybody's fingers do that. <laughs> no. Exactly. Yep. That's an excellent point, uh, Melissa Longo. Um, I can't do it as well with my left hand. Like my hands get tired. Oh, it's gonna make, mm. make me raise my hand on this zoom. I can't go to anyway. the do that. Right Does that work? My left. How do you raise my, your hand? My finger bounces. If you out go like this. this for long enough, Zoom catches it, and then you end up like doing a hand raise. Watch, I'm going to move in a second. Ah! Mine's okay. not doing it now. Wow. <laughs> Only okay. Ryan may ask a question. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> Anne Marie. Oh, see, oh, Melissa it did it too. Great job, Melissa. For me, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> uh, Anne Marie, can you uh, tell us more stuff. about what you found? Yes. So I sent you, so this guy is like a, he's on my first solar cell. He's such a wealth of information. <laughs> so he then, he posted two pictures in the party slash party venue. And then um, like an hour later, which I only caught now, he posted another picture like from the end of the night. And I was just like looking in the background. Like, I almost thought I saw Mary Chifo, but no, no such luck. But, um, mm. but it's cool. Like it looks like it took place like at their, I don't know. You'll see. There's something that's like, it looks like the stage is actually labeled Star Trek stage now. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you talking about this picture here? Yeah, you're right. As soon as I saw that, I was like, is that Mary Chifo? I don't right, know. right back here. <laughs> it's I don't no, know. It's it, definitely it not. Could it's, be but not from far all. away, you you look you gotta zoom in for a second. Trying to be Mary Chifo. That person isn't tall enough. No, I was yeah. gonna say too. But That's the true. one too short. the guy with the back to us could be Ash Tyler. Yep. Oh yes. That's, that, true. that's his beard. You are so that look at that. Be, Looks with yeah, his man saw. bun right here. Yep. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think that's our guy. I think back of his ears and compare. Paging <laughs> Laurel. <laughs> enhance. Enhance. <laughs> Laurel's seen the back of his ears for sure. Oh <laughs> well, I hope they did have a kid together. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, we got to get a poll going here. <laughs> yeah, we're overdue. We're half an hour in. Poll face. Poll face. face. <laughs> Whole face, whole face, whole face. <laughs> this is how we fill the silence in between. <laughs> okay, so the question is: I thought of Depeche Mode in that. In the picture, was that Shazad Latif? I I think it is. I, it can, I think. it really it looks really like could him. be, and it looks like his style too. Like I've seen him wear this kind of jacket totally. before. Yeah, well, and the facial the hair kind of yeah, works. Yeah, it's got the beard. Yeah. It's got the bun, and it's mm -hmm. it's similar height. Let me Google mm -hmm. these ears. <laughs> 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 
Who's this mystery guy right here? Oh my. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I, whatever. I, I say mean, it really could be. He looks like I mean, not, I don't even like, think it it's could a stunt be. double. I think it it's really very much looks like, yeah. like, yeah. <clears throat> and like, I hope, I hope, I hope, we so hope too. That they're in it. Yeah. I'm just not We've been hoping this. my dreams to it. We've been hoping this for years. It's about time yes, we got a little nugget that points in that direction, right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, nuggets. I wish All there right. was a Twitter account that just showed people's back of their heads. Like... <laughs> Uh, get on that John Orkiola. <laughs> <laughs> right. Be true to the name. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. I mean, <laughs> who knows? Okay. Maybe there is. So, Anne Marie, were there any other significant others of significance? <laughs> no, not, not really. Those were, I mean, those were the main ones to come out. I also sent you the picture of just like it looks like the stage they shoot in. Mm -hmm. it looks kind of cool like if that is the stage they shot in they've like actually installed like a star trek sign on the outside which i haven't seen a picture of before all i see is that oh, clint I howard said, thing. sorry i said it to the wrong person <laughs> which i don't know who i don't it's not showing up that it went anywhere okay uh please hold good thing this isn't live Okay, okay, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. I want to make you wait. It looks oh, so yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, I saw this. This is good. You're right. This is good stuff. Whoa. Ooh. Stage eight. That is oh, awesome. Oh, cool. Pretty. It has cones and everything. Yes. That's how you know it's legit. <laughs> yeah. Cones and a door. What more <laughs> do you need? <laughs> So did it, I mean, I, I want to know all the ins and outs like we used to know about, like we know about like Paramount set and like mm. they were on there because clearly Section 31 and Strange New Worlds are filming, were filming at the same time. So does that mean they have a second stage? How far apart are they? Is there an alley they all hang out in? Like stuff like that. Aww. Right. Okay. This sounds like a book Larry Nemechek really yes. needs to write. Yes. Or Larry's always like, uh, my column's coming up, for Fistful of Data, for the next Star Trek Explorer, official Star Trek magazine. Who has a topic? And I'm going to be like, uh, we need to know the map of the stages in Toronto. Yep. <laughs> so, Ooh, yep. yeah. Oh, good See, topic. This could be the, his front. Whoa, whoa, Melissa <laughs> is doing oh. some deep dives. What'd you find for us? <laughs> well, um, what site are you on, Melissa? <laughs> hang on. Hang this on. is the Instagram account that's just people's fronts. No, I just Googled Shazad. Holy fronts. Shazad Latif. And uh, he was at, uh, hang on. Stand by. I, yes. I was thinking, Stand by I was doing thinking he, boy, he has really luscious hair. He does. He does, though. <laughs> that is a thousand percent a jacket he would wear. And that's yes. totally his yes. posture. I just watched him in a Hulu movie, too. That's where he's wearing the whole clothes and not Starfleet. So yeah. it's a very Euro kind of jacket. Let's just check. Mm -hmm. Is he on Twitter? Let's stop him. <laughs> this is just <laughs> all right. This, this is, is really really investigative like... reporting. We're going Star deep. Star yeah. Trek and no chill. Well, <laughs> no chill. We're like <laughs> check his this Twitter. This is how we're chilling tonight. <laughs> Google his ears. I checked his phone location. While we wait, there there was a quiz that was sent to you <laughs> there's yeah. a quiz kind of yeah it's a fun if one we're gonna be to. pulling that one out of course we love it's fun relevant. let's do that <laughs> uh um, i don't know if it's a quiz but i we've got this tr oh, two it's... truths and a lie right yes oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Ooh. now yeah. it is it's two truths and a lie section 31 style yes Ooh. so then they're all lies right is that the trick? Especially the lies. Oh, yeah. that would have been a great trick. <laughs> if, I had, <laughs> if I had thought of it. But, yeah, section 31 is fun. Okay, so um, this is the pick. And I just sent it to your Facebook. 
I don't even use Facebook, you guys. What it? <laughs> well, because it's, I don't know. It seems like it's easier to pull up pictures there, but I could be wrong. It is. <laughs> See, that could be a match to the back of that person. Nice. Mm -hmm. It seems possible. Matt Boardman says, hashtag front of the head. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> And Faith Owl says, hack his email account. <laughs> Whoa, Jenny, do you have a do you have a flannel hanging next to you? I can just appear yeah, for a second. <laughs> Her backup <laughs> flannel. Hey, 1994 nice. is back, everybody. Yes, finally. Finally. It never left. Oh. It never left. Oh, although I'm getting quite warm. Oh so. man. Oh the green arrow was the one time I was fashionable. We are closing the uh, poll and 60, what does that say? 64% of you said, yes, in fact, I believe that is Shazad Latif. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay, next time we have a party, do they have one of those things like up at gas stations that are like marked by the foot. So if somebody robs it, they can tell like how tall the person was when they leave. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the first time I saw Shazad Latif in something was not Star Trek. It was Spooks. Oh, interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's yes. Yes. Spook so slash MI5. Yeah. MI5. Yeah. MI5. Mm -hmm. So good. And I was so impressed with his diction because he has great plosives. And the way he says and, boom. and I was like, wow, he's so fun to listen to talk. I love that. <laughs> <when he> talks. <laughs> All right. So let's play this game, everybody, because it looks really fun. I have not peaked. So I'm going to get as well. Right uh, so it's two truths and a dare. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh, that would be fun. <gasps> Section 31 style. Okay. Amazing. <clears throat> so this one is enterprise related. Oh, no. Okay. Here are the three items. Number one, sometime between the years 21 and 2149 and 2151. I need to read that again. Take two. Good thing it's not live. <laughs> Sometime between the years 2149 and 2151, Ensign Malcolm Reed was recruited by Section 31. Okay. Wait, what? No. <laughs> yeah. I literally just looked that up the other day, but I can't remember the years. Number two. Section 31 took an interest in Lieutenant Malcolm Reed's investigation of the kidnapping of Lieutenant Hoshi Sato. Number three, Lieutenant Malcolm Reed was thrown in the brig for following orders given by a Section 31 intelligence officer to sabotage evidence of a Klingon attack. Which one of those is not true which one of those is a lie written by a liar and which two are written <laughs> by a truth teller <laughs> oh. one I just like the two, way you say liar yeah all accusatory liar. I thought I found liar. Video, but it's jason isaacs damn it liar liar <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is yes um, i do so here they are again so, uh between the years of 2149 and 2151 ensign malcolm reed was recruited by section 31 number two section 31 took an interest in lieutenant malcolm reed's investigation of the kidnapping of lieutenant hoshi sato and number three lieutenant malcolm reed was thrown in the brig for following orders given by a Section 31 intelligence officer to sabotage evidence of a Klingon attack. Mm. So I have not seen Enterprise since 2149, basically. 
<laughs> since its first airing. But what made my bristly buns happen was Ensign Malcolm Reed. Like, was, was he an ensign when he was? So that, that was my thought. I just thought that one might not be true, but I don't really remember. It's been a no. while since I've seen it. He was not an ensign. So that was that was the one that grabbed my attention was that word ensign. I don't think. Unless they just unless he was just with no. Section 31 since well before Enterprise started, which I don't no. recall. No, no, no. But I was he, he was. Was see? he? What? See? Yeah, actually, Bashir... my radar went off with mm -hmm. Lieutenant Hoshi Sato. Was that ever a thing? I thought she was an ensign. Now, granted, oh, you're I have right. not watched it does Enterprise say... in 10 no. years. No, you're right. It does say Lieutenant Hoshi Sato, and she was never a lieutenant on Enterprises, if I remember correctly. Huh. If I remember so... correctly. I don't know, but there were a couple of weird flashback things. It would have to be a flash forward. Yeah. Yeah. Like alternate timeline, I mean. Um, yeah, we have some guesses in the live chat too. Um, <laughs> screw them, we're having too much fun. <laughs> okay. No, let's hear it. No, 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 let's hear it. Um, A W N B 95, I don't know how to pronounce that, says number three. K L Bliss says the first one. John Davis said three is the lie. Um, and then Glenn says two, Athena says two, um, and so then it's all over the place. Yeah, mm. we don't know. In other words, do you have the answer on this thing? Let me see. No, you I don't. Do what is the answer? The answer on the second page. But oh, okay. I can give I you the check. answer. Yeah, please. I can give you the answer, and the answer is number two. Um, because it wasn't Hoshi that got kidnapped. It was Dr. Phlox that got kidnapped by the Klingons because oh, they needed a cure oh, yeah. for a certain thing. Yeah. Yes. And, and Hoshi Sato it is, is listed in, um, memory alpha as a Lieutenant. So. Oh, she is. Okay. Good for, yeah. good I for mean, Hoshi. She, yeah. She definitely wasn't in the show, unless that's how it, and maybe it, that's just how the show ended was with her getting Possibly. promoted. I remember her and Travis were both ensigns. Travis's yeah. character was actually initially going to be a lieutenant, hmm. if I remember correctly. But then they said they didn't want to be too top heavy and just have everybody mm. up high. Mm -hmm. So they, they brought him down to an ensign. But then mm -hmm. it kind of seemed weird that this guy that had been spacefaring all over the place. He was an expert in all these things, you know, and he was still just an ensign. <laughs> oh, yeah, so right. nothing's perfect, it's, but it's just like Harry Kim on Voyager. Somebody yeah. had to be the ensign, no matter Forever. what Harry did, no matter how many times he died or saved the ship or anything. Yeah. Uh, ensign, you are the ensign. Yeah. And then that's... um it says ensign Reed because that's when he was recruited as an nice. right to section Good. 31 right out of the academy so gotcha. mm. perfect perfect all Weird. right so the next one is discovery all right amory time to bone up on your discovery First, stuff. Just say, i have checked multiple ear pictures and i am convinced <laughs> those ears line up at least like in yes. the lighting from what you can see they yes. your store are possible are like they for sure don't discount that it's shizology can nice. we get an earologist, please? Somebody, <laughs> not to be confused with a urologist, but a yeah, no, that's a different thing. So when they took that picture, they were like, "Hey, Shazad, turn mm -hmm. around." He's like, "But my ears, they're recognizable." Nah, nobody. Star Trek fans don't care about <laughs> lobes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey. Some do though. Yeah. Some do. Oh my God, they don't even have podcasts mm. about yours. <laughs> so the next one is discovery related, everybody. Number one, Section 31 used an abandoned penal colony as its headquarters. <laughs> Makes me laugh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't focus on me, Melissa. Sorry. <laughs> you said penal. <laughs> <laughs> I, love how Sorry. Much I thought that's what you were laughing, Jenny. Yeah, they I were. I was laughing, but I was like nine years old. 
<laughs> At least I didn't realize you had your Section 31 badge on. Yes, I just put it on because <laughs> oh, I nice. just forgot. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> children, cover your ears. <laughs> Number one, Section 31 used an abandoned penal colony as its headquarters. <laughs> No. <laughs> We're never going to get through. Number 12. Number two, Section 31 used an abandoned penal colony. No. Number two, Section 31 <laughs> took an interest in finding Spock when he escaped from Starbase 5. Number three, in the hopes of gaining strategic advantage in what was believed to be a temporal arms race with the Romulans, Section 31 created the Daedalus Project. Daedalus? Daedalus. 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 Project. Daedalus. Daedalus. That's Daedalus. Nobody? Anybody? Hercules? No? Okay. Anyway, go on. Penal colony. Char, that was so 547. <laughs> <laughs> And for you, oh Jenny, 947. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Oh, so my no gosh. Number one, uh, Section 31 Ooh. used an abandoned penal colony as its headquarters. <laughs> number two, Section 31 took an interest in finding Spock when he escaped from Starbase 5. Number three, in the hopes of gaining strategic advantage in what was believed to be a temporal arms race with the Romulans, Section 31 created the Daedalus, Daedalus Project. Daedalus? That. I don't know I that one. Daedalus. You know the one. Daedalus. 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 I think. Daedalus. I know. I had to look several times. Oh, wait. Which one is the lie, everybody in the live chat? Which one is the lie? Okay, you got everybody saying penal, you guys. Calm down, everybody. <laughs> it's Friday. It's not, that's not <laughs> shenanigan day. Everybody knows. Um, Faith huh? Howell says three is the lie. Steve Case says number one is the lie. Uh, Linda Andreg says it's pronounced like dataless. Dataless. Hmm. Um, Dave Gregory says number three. Athena says number two. Chris Marshall also says Spock. Chris Marshall says number five is alive. He didn't really oh, say that, but he was thinking it. Johnny, That's from Short Circuit. Johnny, yeah, Johnny Five. Is the answer, five? Uh, Melissa Longo. The answer is number three. The all, Everything is correct except for I replaced the Klingons, which is the right answer of that, with Romulans. So, yeah, everything else is correct. And I had to look at how to spell that thing dataless <laughs> many times because i'm like mm. wait am i spelling that right am i spelling that right huh <laughs> but yeah excellent all right we're moving on to deep space nine yay N number one section 31 infected odo with a morphogenic virus during a visit to starfleet medical by a doctor named mora Number two, Dr. Julian Bashir and Chief Miles Edward O'Brien used a multitronic engrammatic, yep, engrammatic interpreter to get into the brain of Section 31 agent Sloan to retrieve the cure for the virus that has infected Odo. Mm. Number three, Romulan Chairman Koval was a secret operative of Section 31. What do you think, Anne-Marie? Romulans and Klingons everywhere. Gosh. <laughs> I want to say the first one, just because I feel like Dr. Vora wasn't there when it happened, but... A lot of the chat um, is saying number one as well. Yeah, I think so too. I think Mora is the landmine there. I think Mora is the poop that you step in on that one, on that 
grassy knoll. Oh, no. <laughs> Are they all yeah. answering? Yep. Uh, Faith Pretty says much. one. On B says one. <clears throat> Matt Boardman says one. Linda Agnerick says two. Kale Bliss says one. Dave Gregory's pissed. He says one. Mora had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Tell him, Dave. <laughs> Slamming his fist, throwing his root beer across the room. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with Dave Gregory and Dr. Mora. He nah. will bite you. He will teach yeah. you a lesson. <laughs> like badgie. Trust me, those of you going to Star Trek Las Vegas Creation Entertainment's STLV knows if you're around Dave Gregory, only say nice things about Dr. Mora or you're going to get an earful. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe me but watch test it out walk by him and be like just kind of quietly just be like dr morris sucks you'll see him turn around so fast anyway uh glenn iverson says one because mora wasn't involved in infecting odo lucia says one okay what's the answer melissa it's one yes the doctor that infected odo was never named we just know that it was at starfleet medical and I threw Dr. Mora in because, oh, because it's fun. But oh, no, his dad would never. <laughs> um, never. But Odo's oh, no, dad would never infect Odo with that. <laughs> On purpose. Um, right. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. So next we've got the lower decks. Number one, transporter copied Lieutenant Junior Grade William Boimler faked what? I'm lost with this sentence. Sorry. <laughs> Tra <laughs> transporter copied night. Lieutenant Junior Grade William Boimler faked his death aboard the USS Titan after being recruited by Section 31. Number two, not copied Ensign Brad Boimler tells Mariner that Section 31 walks really slow to conserve energy and to practice their stealthy spy moves. <laughs> Number three, William Boimler is resurrected on a defiant class ship and laughs wickedly when he's given an edgy Section 31 black calm badge. Like this one? Like this one? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Let's go over them again. Transporter copied Lieutenant Junior Grade William Boimler faked his death aboard the USS Titan after being recruited by Section 31. Not copied, not copied Ensign Brad Boimler tells Mariner that Section 31 walks really slowly to conserve energy and to practice their stealthy spy moves. Number three, William Boimler is resurrected on a defiant class ship and laughs wickedly when he's given an edgy Section 31 black comm badge. I think I know the answer. But I'll wait what for everybody it? to give. I could be wrong, as usual. <laughs> I'm very used to being wrong. However, my guess is that number one is the liar because... Watch for Melissa's face. Try not to give anything away. It's tough. She's fighting it. She's hanging. <laughs> she's hanging in there. She's trying so hard. To, like when you're holding a, a yawn in, in a meeting, she's holding a smile. Oh, no, I want a I yawn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I think he was recruited by Section 31 uh, before, or that he died before being recruited by Section 31. Not that he faked his death. Or the USS Titan after being recruited by Section 3. I don't know, though. Did he hmm. fake his death or did Section 31 fake his death? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just feel like I feel like there's something there's something in there that's not jiving with my with my brain. Hmm. Now, mind you, I was up till 3 a.m. watching Slipknot, but <laughs> that'll really <clears throat> rattle your brain. And some mushroom head that a lot of people believe uh, Slipknot copied. Although mushroom head is from Ohio and Slipknot's from mm. Iowa. Sounds similar, but still different mm. states. Mm. But 
Mushroom Head members and their fans believe that Slipknot copied their uh, gimmick, you know, hmm. being like a bunch of metal weirdos with masks and stuff. Hmm. The timeline seems to line up with that theory. Mushroom Head was first. Let's see what people have said here. Um, KL Bliss says, one, true. Are we picking the false, though? We're picking the falsehood. Right. I thought we were. Uh, Wardogheim says two is false. Matt says two. Oh. On B says one. Faith says two. EGT says two. Lucia says two. John Davis says two. Uh, speaking of corn, we have a John Davis. Everybody knows this lead singer nice. of corn is Jonathan Davis. Uh, they were from Bakersfield, just like Aaron Malone, oh. who was in the live chat earlier. Oh. Um <clears throat> Kale Bliss says two. There we go. Dave Gregory says three. Zanza says three. Athena says three. There's a lot of twos. What do you say, Melissa? It's two. It's not slow. It's really fast. <laughs> he said, he told Mariner that section 31 speed walks to conserve energy. <laughs> so good. You're so right. Ooh, I love that. Mm. That's good. And it was a defiant class ship because I watched it last night and it was definitely a defiant mm. class ship that mm. we woke up on. Oh, man, life is so fun. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next is Pickard. Oh, this one's an easy one. <laughs> Star <John> Trek Luck. <laughs> Pickard. <laughs> this one's an easy one. <laughs> Number one, Worf calls Section 31 a critical division of Starfleet intelligence. Number two, Ferengi Sneed reveals Rafi Musiker as an intelligence agent for Section 31. Number three, Worf claims that chamomile tea is Section 31's <laughs> beverage of choice. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> boy that you is right a there. toughie i am boy i am porn swoggled i just can't even what do you char any idea yeah hmm. I, I, as far as i know chamomile tea is not uh, section 31 hasn't approved of any beverage although i think if they did liquid death whatever you're drinking Ryan, <laughs> yeah. would be it mm -hmm. that's pretty metal yeah. and they have black cans like... so that fits the motif yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, there wasn't that much in Picard about Section 31, but you got to throw it in there because they did include Section 31. So, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> hmm. I like that. So, uh, everyone endorses chamomile tea. Everybody <laughs> says yeah. it's three that's false. <laughs> Melissa, are they correct? Yes, they are correct. <laughs> I wish they weren't because that would be fun. <laughs> they wouldn't be as stealthy if they drank mm -hmm. too much chamomile tea. Oh, true. They'd be Maybe nappy. they would. Maybe they wouldn't be, be all nappy. twitchy. All right, the last one. Here's a fun special one. Star Trek Into Darkness. Mm, okay. This is where we separate the Klingons from the Romulans. Hmm. Number one, in the Kelvin universe, Section 31 is headed by Admiral Alexander Marcus. <clears throat> Number two, Carol Marcus, the daughter of Admiral Marcus, spoke out against Section 31 during a memorial service that honored all those who had fallen at the hands of her father. Hmm. Number three, under the control of Section 31, Khan Noonien Singh was coerced into a building, into building a dreadnought class vessel. Sorry, under the control of Section 31, Khan Noonien Singh was coerced into building a dreadnought class vessel 
I just realized I somehow never saw Star Trek Into Darkness. Get the... Say what? Oh, my. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't say that. Actually, the same. That's why I couldn't get the never have I ever point on that. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I'm so Well, sorry. now you know what you got to do. So beyond? So you, you, you missed it. you see the first one? Mm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay. yeah. I think I think I got all wrapped up in the whole Bandersnatch thing and and uh um oh, at the boy. time was like mm, I'll check it out later. Oh, Cumberbatch. Once I get over the weirdness of this. Yeah. Remember I said he looks yeah. like my ex-boyfriend. So I'm like nee, 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 nee. Oh. oh. Like he had a good reason then. Oh. Yeah. I appreciate his talent, but I sometimes have an issue like Yeah. But does your ex-boyfriend sound like him i believe that's the key. no to to be fair no no he does not he wishes <laughs> actually you wish too no 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 yeah people love his voice and his fashion of speech so i like how he says penguins what do you say peng penguins penguins <laughs> there's a clip from him on um what's his face uh the british guy the, oh the, graham, norton. graham norton yeah graham norton. yeah there's a oh. graham norton clip if you google <clears throat> cumberbatch and penguins there's a lovely little clip penguins Peng penguins <laughs> it <doesn't> come out <laughs> right <laughs> I would have thought that he calls them like penguins, like when when you see the commercial for jaguars and they go, "Oh my god, you're local jaguar. jaguar dealer." Like <laughs> yeah. jaguar. Yeah, I love and they words even changed like that. that. In Britain, they used to call it jaguar when when I really? was a, a little squirt, and I really? saw those, and then then I see them the newer commercials for them, and they're like jaguar, and I'm like, wait, what? Huh? They've got to be really weird about vowels over there, mm -hmm. like aluminium, mercury. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that about British people. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ryan disagrees. I appreciate yeah. and emulate their use of the the letter U in many words. Mm. In spelling, color, favorite. Oh, got it. Uh huh neighborhood exactly but I'm here's what's weird about Americans. them mm -hmm. so americans and i think canadians we say the letter h right and we pronounce it like happy or hello and we call the letter h right the brits don't pronounce the h in happy or hello, they go, I'm happy, I'm hello, or, or the hello, or you know, whatever hello. weird stuff they do, right? Also, like, went to Depending uh, where you're, yeah, exactly. where you're from. Yeah. But mm -hmm. here's the funny part. But they do pronounce it in the letter H. Yeah. yeah. So they're like the reverse. Those, they, those rat, they just want to do everything differently. They're such rebels. Anyway. See, I figured as Americans, that's why we dropped the U's in a lot of our spellings, because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, screw that. That's what they're going to do. We're going to be different. That's our job. America. Yeah, America. <laughs> We're independent. We drop our U's. <laughs> Who we needs them? We went for it. We, dro we dropped them in four words. So there, <laughs> England. Yeah. Look at us now. Totally. So <laughs> once again, <clears throat> Into Darkness. Number one, in the Kelvin universe, Section 31 <laughs> is headed by Admiral Alexander Marcus. I don't remember his first name. Maybe that's a thing. Ooh. Number two, Carol Marcus, the daughter of Admiral Marcus, spoke out against Section 31 during a memorial service that honored all those who had fallen at the hands of her father. Number three, under the control of Section 31, Khan Noonien Singh was coerced into building a dreadnought class vessel. What are those guesses? I think this one's a toughie. I think so. it's mm -hmm. tough because nobody saw the movie, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we've just leached it out of our brains if you didn't like it. I bet somebody in the chat knows. 
I loved it. Sure. I'm in the minority there. (laughs) But I didn't quite care for Beyond Burger as much. I thought Beyond Burger was a little too Beastie Boysy for me. (laughs) See, Impossible Burger is a little better in my opinion. I prefer Beyond, but I think Mm. I prefer Beyond as well. Yeah. Although Beyond Burger stock has plummeted, and I don't know know. why. I'm pissed. Really? Uh, Yeah. I don't. I I don't know. Really? Yeah. Like a lot, like eighty percent or something crazy. Really? Yeah, oh, maybe what's 90. going on? Oh man. Uh okay. So the answer, Melissa, is what? Is number two. It was Kirk who gave the speech at the memorial speaking out against section 31. Makes more sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I threw in the dreadnought one because dreadnought we saw in Prodigy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, I was like, I know that like, name. Kind of like a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> Lisa's good at lies. Wow, four for five. Yeah, that guy's good. Not Who bad. was four for five? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, but we did like six of them. We did six. Yeah, um, but we- <laughs> so he lost count. I got to her. Bob's you made vegetarian is- chili. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Love it. Yum. Wow. Throwing some oh, cornbread. Good. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Baked Everybody potato. in the live chat, let us know how many you got right out of six or five. Hmm. Yeah, if you don't right. count the Picard one because that was just a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> the Pickard. Mr. Um, Pickard. <laughs> oh my god, that was a good impression. Thank you. <laughs> Save that for STSF. <laughs> That's another news item that oh everybody god, oh is... My god. You know what people need to do? Because you know how people do like the Cupid group cosplay? For STSF, oh. people need to do the like fake theater troupe cosplay of yeah. um, Time Zero. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. With a bone of Samuel Clemens lurking. Yeah. Oh, those there were so many of oh, you could not like <laughs> you could not, like swing a Star Trek tote bag and not hit a Mark Twain at SDSF. A lot of twaining. <laughs> For the cruise, there's that picture of like 10 Mark Twains and they're all doing the like yeah. Spider-Man. That was incredible. Oh, that, that would was be, yeah. Cool. yeah that and was... one of the people then another night just put on like board implants, so it was like Mark Twain and Venice and <laughs> Could you imagine the entire board cube going, I say, I say, I say. <laughs> I do declare you will be assimilated. I do declare. Oh my God. Like, I can't believe this is what a Star Trek convention has become. <laughs> it's kind of fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I thought, but maybe no. <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> I got halfway off, and I'm like, no, no, no. Never mind. <gasps> Check this out. Oh yeah. Say what? Star Trek. Open a channel. A woman's trek by Nana wow. Visitor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's a book uh, that's coming out October first. You can already pre-order. Uh, you could, if easiest way to find it, you could go to Trek Central. That's at the Trek Central. Find this post or this tweet or whatever it is and click the pre-order button. But you can also just find it on Amazon. We found it before. It's easy to find. Super chill. Check this out. Looks great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So you want to do like the fan thing in the comments? Where's Dax? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> She's in the book. <laughs> I'm sure. She's in the book, so read it. <laughs> and then you'll find Dax. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> K.L. Blistish from Bliss Pillows, one of the days at STSF was dressed up as Mark Twain. And she said that Don, Tani, and Eugene Cordero loved the Twains. She she was next to Stephanie Dole and they both were Mark Twain. And she awesome. said that they broke into impersonations when they watched by. 
<laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> How could you not? Oh, you know, why would you, know, you wouldn't let that opportunity go by? No way. The entire planet needs to dress up as Mark Twain and Twain with each other because we just need that kind of energy to spread across the globe. Look, to is this by us. <laughs> Is this how we solve the world's problems? Is we twain it out? We yeah, twain it basically. out. Basically. <laughs> I mean, DMAP Boardman says, What? No Leah Brahms. I'm out. <laughs> Seriously. Right? She built that engine. No Cito Jaxa. What? Man. Mm-hmm. Pissing me off. What a rip. <laughs> so next. <laughs> no, Mistress Beata. Oh yeah. Exactly. Whoa, Call my money good. back. That's... Great deep cut. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Angel Who body. is the Vajazel? Oh, yeah, how yeah, come you got a book full of women and no Vajazel? Oh my god. Oh, my god. Me. Remember she oh, was wait the a minute. Lady? Wait a minute. Uh, no, oh, I remember. I'm never gonna get Picard, over. Picard season Start one. Up. Yes. Episode seven, where they go to the planet with Artists. the Quark's bar, mm-hmm. and she's there with Mister Vup. Yes, come on, I'm pretty sure it's episode seven. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Have a book full of. Actually, was it even was it seven? I looked Regardless. through that whole book and I didn't Start find a city one rag. That was the name of the episode. On it. Mm. Oh, I love that episode. Although, yeah, me too. Yeah. But after about that. free cloud, that's what the place is called. Free cloud, right? free cloud. and that's a freaks free joint. That is, cloud. that's where you get the jazel. <laughs> yeah. A freaks joint. <laughs> Sorry, that's the only thing I could think of when you say I that. Know. I flipped through every page and I didn't find the jazel on one of them. That book. <laughs> anyway, oh <my> gosh. <laughs> or Mister Vup. Yeah. Mr. Anyway, let's. And get out of that situation. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bucks in that new show on Apple TV, Palm Royale, which I haven't watched yet. It's about like hanging out in Palm Beach or whatever, Palm Springs. Um, mm. But Dominic Burgess or Burgess, who's a big Star Trek fan, he uh, he's like in everything. And so he's in the first two episodes. Right. Wow. I love Mr. Bob. And he's so cool. Mm. I was so mad when they killed him. Obviously, he's a bad guy on Picard, but like, it yeah. was sad that he lost him. He was a funny, he was a fun villain. Yeah, they were cool aliens. That's a species that would be cool to revisit. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm very excited to revisit the Kelleron. Yes. The- yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm Anne excited Marie. to read Nana's book. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very yes. excited to yes. read Nana's book. She's worked a, very hard on it. Absolutely. Anne Marie, did you really go through every Shazad Latif picture <laughs> to look <laughs> at his ears? Yes, of course I she did. Like, these are what I would look like if, if I was doing plastic surgery on somebody's ears. I picked the ones where you kind of get the contour to think how it would look like from behind, but I couldn't find any directly behind him. But when you compare <laughs> them, the only question is the light that's hitting in that pink room kind mm. of like the contour. But mm. it, I mean, from all the pictures, there's nothing that's saying it's not those ears. And, and the so, back of it, like the way he stands, 1000% could be him, unless it's like, yeah. A hmm. Or, I mean, a stunt double. Hmm. Well, it's the facial <laughs> hair to me for me. Yeah, the, the, the growth pattern. And yeah. the bun and the man mm-hmm. bun. And the bun. Here. He yes. does the man bun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's more clean shaven, like around this part than usual, mm-hmm. but. To say he couldn't be for the show. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. It sure could be. Can't really confirm, but we also can't deny. Exactly. Hmm. That's yeah. perfect section. And there's, right there's no there. other picture identifying the the man with the bun. Oh well let's see correct? actually. Let's see if there is if we can is match it. Uh-huh. We're not seeing the back of this guy's head. <laughs> right? <laughs> Which Hang on. Guy? John Arcula? This guy right here. He's got a he's got an ear. That's he not him. Oh, oh, wait, but no beard no beard wait, though. No Never beard. Mind. And he's not yeah. tall enough. Well, he's I slumping. I know, but you can you can but tell no. that he's not tall enough. 
What and if also it's his the hair that's up behind the uh, the plaid up in the corner? What if it's no, that's him hiding no, the no, no, that's, no, 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 not in the plaid, behind the plaid. So yeah, there's like an this, eyeball up there. That yeah, but, like no. glasses. I have been playing a fun game with the Crab Chuck sisters where I'm like, hey, there's like one of your eyes, like in the far distance. <laughs> 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 one confirmed was at that dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh wait, Glenn Iverson, you're right. It was Vajazel, not Vajazel. Yes, that's what I oh. said. <laughs> Seven times. I was like, I swear it didn't. Vajazel. I thought it was Vajazel. Vajazel's a completely <laughs> other thing, Ryan. We can talk about that off camera. <laughs> It was bejazel though, huh? I think yeah. that sounds right. I think that does sound <laughs> because, really? like, in in like Spanish and Hispanic languages, the B and the V are very yep. interchangeable a lot of times. Yes, you know? mm -hmm. yes, that's true. That's fair. Yep. So maybe that's, that's what very confused true. Me. <laughs> oh my god! We're gonna have oh to cut. God. Like, I never thought we'd be talking about this on yep. Star Trek and Chill, but you know what? It, it shows everything it's is possible. Chill. Exactly. <laughs> B Thank you, Glenn Iverson. Ja you said that, Jenny? I didn't even hear you say it. I was too busy, like... Because you were like, Vajazel, Vajazel. And I'm like, I'm like, he's really carrying this joke pretty far, right? Eh? <laughs> I wasn't joking, though. That was the problem. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. First Discovery. So, like, you guys ever watch the new shows and then you're thinking first, like, yes. see teasers <laughs> or see teasers and when they reveal a new character you're like oh my god I'm so jealous of this friend who looks similar to them and they're gonna get to cosplay like so that happened to me when I was mm. re-watching the trailer and this guy who's the um Keller and Ray Rayner or whatever his name is I was like some way he like a mannerism he had I was like oh my god he looks like an old Randy Frank and I was like oh my god that would be like <laughs> amazing cosplay and actually, I just got to the episode in Battlestar Galactica where he appears. And I'm like, well, right? I'm just but, nice. yeah. I'm just so like, how far are you in your watch? Um, I think I'm like, so aside from that, like initial mini series, I think I'm on seven or eight. In wow, that one. was fast. You just started just, like yeah. a week ago, right? I started tonight. I it was four. yesterday. Yeah. Four. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you've watched a lot in four nights. So Look at good. you. Um, but That's I just I just ended my first episode on IMDb, which was which episode? Let me see what it's called. I think it's like Flesh and something. Oh no, hmm. Six Degrees of Separation. Basically, like no, I don't know everybody's name yet, but like number six comes and like tries to frame Gaius as being oh um, yeah. Like a, I want to say change, like a Cylon. <laughs> being like, yeah, being responsible. Yeah, and like it's actually like her, not imaginary her. Glasses and sick. It's off things. It's so good. Jim, this man is a Cylon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, keep us posted on your Battlestar watch. Wow, you fly through it pretty quickly. Well, now that that first thing was three hours and kind of like a monolith, and what I tried to watch in the past, it's like a little intimidating, have, like clicking on something that's three hours long. But now that they're just like 43 minutes, they like fly. Mm -hmm. through. So, so fun. Yeah, when I first watched it through, I think I watched two episodes a night. I think that's kind yeah. of what I did. It's that's kind, kind of what addictive. I did. That's not bad. Because yeah. I just finished a rewatch and it's... But the still, that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, the Matt Boardman says it makes me so happy that Anne Marie is watching BSG. Right? Yeah. About well, damn I'm time. Mm -hmm. I'm finally understanding some of the guests who have like random tables at STLV, and everyone's yes. like, yes. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, that's going to be a whole new like corner of a row, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Plus, I just can't get over this other Dr. Bashir. It's so yes, I know. Especially because they both have the same accent. And mm. I'm just like, <laughs> what are the odds? It's I know. so nuts. Gaius Bashir. 
I'm gonna say mannerisms. It's so crazy. <laughs> I love it. It's really fun. I thought the same thing when I first watched it. And then I tried mm -hmm. to like picture like Alexander Siddig playing Gaius Balter yeah. or what's his name? James oh, Callis, I think Callis, is his name. Yeah. James Callis playing Dr. Bashir and kind of just switching them around. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that is crazy. It's more just like in real life, they both are so similar. Uh, I don't know. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. to think of. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. It is. I can't say that I thought that when I was watching Battlestar Galactica. Really? It oh, it never hit me like a ton of bricks. Occurred to me, and then, and then, got so back into um, Star Trek that, and now it's like, oh, why did I never see it before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like well first of all it's so crazy now that i've like listened to so many podcasts about voyager including shars but, like especially the whole like what ronald d moore would wanted for voyager like this is literally exactly what he wanted for voyager and then, yeah. like, yes mm -hmm. yes now yes like, yes such a massive for all mankind fan yeah um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, like, crazy scene like it's sort of like the missing link between how he evolved as a writer mm -hmm. like um, all seen Star Trek so many million times that like you have that all memorized and then for all mankind is recent and so it's just like it's like oh my god I can tell that he was still thinking of Star Trek but oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're going yeah. through the bridge now that's so cool yeah, it's yeah. Such an interest and also like as I'm watching Battlestar I like love I'm to be in everybody totally. on the screen and then I'm like oh interesting because then this person went on to be on like supernatural or vampire oh yeah guy. There's yeah, a I lot mean, of supernatural like, crossover, and, like yes, and I'm like, and then that's the link to like, oh, and then like, um, the Cylon. I couldn't believe that's Lucifer's mom on Lucifer. I was like, what? That's the same person. So it's just it's crazy because mm. I mean, just like how sort of like fandom and conventions have evolved. This is clearly like a big link in that. Yeah, it's so fascinating. Actually, exactly. as you keep watching, it's one of the things that I love the most about the show is the way, like, like the continuity all the way through. Mm -hmm. Like, like watching the numbers go down at the beginning, <laughs> like, oh, like, yeah. like in the credits. Every episode is like I'm obsessed every time I watch it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But also, like, like that they yeah. let everything. You know, most shows you've got everything covered in plastic when you wrap at the at night, and but 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 this show they made a point of letting everything get dirty, get old. I was I, I was so talking, cool. I was actually talking to Doug Drexler a couple of weeks ago while I was watching it, and I was just <sighs> saying how how cool it is seeing the seeing like 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 the damage to the Battlestar like mm -hmm. like as the show goes on, and he and and he said once he started, they never once used stock footage for that ship. Wow. The whole run of the series. That's every amazing. episode. Wow. They were, like adding. I love adding. that. I guess That's they brilliant. had to. So yeah. It's, uh, authentically yeah, I that lived in. in. And I didn't mm. realize like Bradley Thompson and David Weddle worked on this one with Ronald D. Moore and like went to BSG mm. after Deep Space Nine with him. So yeah. like now they're all working on Pro Mankind. So just like it's such an interest. It's just so interesting to see how they've all grown as writers mm -hmm. and like ideas that you could see they were toying around with on Star Trek days into this it's just yeah. it's incredible and now I'm like well when I did the Babylon 5 watch it was sort of similar but for some reason BSG just seems like it's such a more massive scale but um it's fun like fine like as you work through being like this is what people always talk about this is what people always talk about like yeah. this is what, like, <laughs> this is what I'm yeah, trying to Babylon 5 and then I like that's when I found like I was like wait a minute Charlene Schmidt has a Babylon 5 podcast. Like, <laughs> yeah. My companion. Because, Done a like, couple things. Is, yes, I want to know. <laughs> I'm like, the next step is for me to start sleeping with BSG podcasts. Like, don't tell the <laughs> greatest Gen about them. But, <laughs> greatest Gen, randomly, I just saw they covered the pilot of BSG this week. So I'm like, that's one I have to oh, do. Oh, boy. Do the whole, see, like, the whole series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the one, the great thing about Battlestar Galactica is that it is so immersive in to the, this world building. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great piece of information, Jenny, that you said that they never covered anything. What a brilliant thing to do because it just adds that much more authenticity yeah. to this story, amazing story that they're telling. It's yeah, so, so good. 
So yeah. yeah, so so as it goes on, they're not like making the sets look. I mean, I mean, yes, I'm sure they were like adding some dings and right. scratches and stuff, but 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 the fact that they just let it get dirty, like it's yeah. just well, are allowed to drink hot chocolate on their engineering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. That's such interesting info. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got to run soon, everybody. But before we go, look, I know this is about Star Trek, <laughs> not <laughs> basketball. However, <laughs> how bad is your bracket? <laughs> I just want to point out that, <clears throat> quote, uh, because the Golden State Warriors are playing tonight against the Indiana Pacers. Oh, and <laughs> this video says the Warriors pulled up with pups. From a local adoption center. Oh my and god. And I think that's oh, no. the cutest thing in the world. Look at this. Oh my, oh my god. gosh. Oh. oh, look at these little rascals. Oh, oh my god. Jonathan Kaminga. That's oh Moses Moody. That's goodness. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh, great awesome. way to promote them. That's amazing. Babies. Yeah. Oh. Andrew Wiggins. Anyway. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my heart. I love it. Oh, oh that's so good. There's only yes, one of us this. here that's not impressed by that. Kitty. And that's the cat. <laughs> and it's Jenny's cat. <laughs> Jenny's cat's like, like I'm not even looking. Really? I can't even look <laughs> at that. <laughs> I want dinner. Dinner, please. Oh, Kitty. <laughs> I was like, I won't even dignify that with the no. response. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's talk about this week very quickly, everybody. So uh, on the Falling Tower YouTube channel, we've got our full review of, let's see, let's pull this up. What are we doing? We're doing cartoon spinoff month. The full review is available of Avatar The Last Airbender. With meteorologist Katie Nicolau, everybody. So Katie, myself, and Dr. Noor review honestly <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender, the new live action show. Did we love it? Did some of us love it and the rest of us be more realistic about it? I don't know. <laughs> Find out and uh, check it out on the Falling Tower YouTube channel. It's all available right there. <laughs> now on mm. Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time on the 7th Rule YouTube channel. Let's see, where are we? We've got our first segment review of Star Trek The Next Generation Season 3, Episode 14. That's the Pi episode, 314, A Matter of Perspective. Oh, a Matter gosh. of Perspective. Then on Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the 7th Rule YouTube channel. Uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Check it out. TNG episode, full review of the TNG episode, The Defector. The Defector. <laughs> is that it's Ronald D. Moore? Title. Yes. The aforementioned. Yeah, it is. I think it Excellent. was his first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time, come right back to this channel for the main viewer, our live Star Trek news show. By then, Anne-Marie will be in the third or fourth season of Battlestar Galactica. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She'll have, and she will tell me that I was right about her favorite is Ellen. Oh, my God. I keep waiting we'll for that. see how that goes, how that I works out. I still say the present. I need, I need yeah. a favorite character. That's Great actress. One. What's her name? Mary Moore? Mary? Mary um, McDonald? Mc McDonald. Yeah. 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 Great story. That was a great story there. Yeah. Um, then on Wednesday, go over to the Falling Tower YouTube <clears throat> channel because we're going to have our review because we're going to be doing more cartoon spinoffs of, uh-oh, where did it go? 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Scooby Doo and oh. Guess Who? What? Scooby Doo oh. and Guess Who? It's a spinoff. It's like 2019. Every episode already. It's a 2019 spinoff of the original Scooby Doo, and our uh, guest is actor producer Desmond Heck. 
our good buddy Aww. Desmond Heck, who calls everybody Jive Turkey. So we review that. <laughs> he does. He usually abbreviates it as JT. Amazing. <laughs> kind of his thing. Whoa. Oh, Scooby Doo. I loved Scooby Doo back in the mm-hmm. day when I was a little wee one. <sighs> Did you love Scrappy Doo, though? Not really. Oh, that guy is the cousin <laughs> Oliver of Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, annoying. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, everybody, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the bell icon for notifications so you always know when we're going live. And if you're listening in, give us a five-star rating and a nice review. We'd really appreciate it. War Dogheim in the live chat reminds us all, if you're watching this live and you want to leave a comment, as soon as we stop going live, hit the refresh button. Comment section drops down like a a ladder, a rope ladder out of a helicopter. (laughs) It just kind of unravels. And then you leave a nice comment. We'd really appreciate that. Thank you, War Dogheim. Were you going to say something, Jenny? Oh, oh, oh! I, it's not important. I can tell you that. Like my, favorite, kids on the block. my favorite, favorite, <laughs> my favorite Scooby Doo episode was like one that was like there was there was a mine and something. And the only thing I really remember is them going, "It's the Miner Forty Niner," and then they all like ran from the guy. I like how Jenny Johnson turned into the new kids on the block when I called on her. I was like, were you going to say something, Jenny? She went, oh, 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 oh. That's what she said. That's what she said. I heard her say it. Oh, my. Well done. Well done. (laughs) Uh, Jenny, can you tell everybody where they can? Thank you. Where they can find me? Yes. They can find me on my social media this week and probably next week. You're going to see a whole bunch of me making a Deep Space Nine painting and I'm having lots of fun mm. and hurting my neck a little bit, but I'm being very oh. careful. So anyway, um, yeah, but um, check it out. I'm at Jenny R. Johnson Art everywhere except for Twitter, where I am just Jenny R. Johnson. Also, you can check out my uh, website where you can also go to my shop, JennyRJohnson.com. Oh, and there are going to be prints of the Deep Space Nine painting. That's it. Hot. Woo-hoo. Nice. Oh. That DS9 thing is looking awesome so far. We saw you doing the little so fine oh tunes God, of the, so the windows. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, massive, massive shout out to the Matt Boardman for helping me do the modeling on Ooh. this project. Yeah. Nice. It was like this. Which is why I'm, <laughs> yes, yes. Which is why I'm able to get all those really super, super fine details. This is a pylon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. This is a lower You're like, pylon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. What about you, Anne Marie? Oh, uh, at Anne Marie Seagull One on Twitter. And uh, Charlene Schmidt, OG podcaster. <laughs> you love to say that, don't you? I do because you've earned it. You deserve uh, that kind you know, of recognition. And here's the weird thing is I wasn't the first, so I don't feel like the OG. Like okay. yeah, I, I just have longevity on my side here. But anyway, if you want to talk to me and follow me, whatever I'm doing, um, my handle is oh the profanity, wherever I'm on a social network. You can buy some soap at boldbubbles.com. And today Wharf is back in the shop. And there he is. There he is. Scented with lilac, like all good Klingons. And it's the movie era. This came on my live Twitter or on my Twitter feed. And I only saw like the top of it. And I was like, wait, is that like a whale tail? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it looks like work to me. That's perfect. And then I was like, oh my God, I love this. And I was like, who's that? It looks like DS9 Wharf. Next week. Dr. Crusher is coming. Movie era Dr. Crusher. With a really good scent. I cannot wait. It is... uh, I've done just plain rose fragrance with her before because like sub rose. uh, Mm -hmm. But I found it very dynamic. Like rose and herb has a little floral, a little earthy, and they complement each other so much. It's one of these things that you just have to try for yourself. It's so damn good. That one I need. It's so cool. like freedom when she talks about like she learned about herbs from her grandmother. Like, what yeah. is bergamot? What does bergamot smell like? Bergamot, Earl Grey tea. It's, it's oh, sweet. that's a tough one to describe. Is I find it refreshing, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. um, mm. it's really complex. It's a little citrusy, but it's more than that. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what? See, this is what I like to. This is going to get me to buy that soap. Just out of curiosity, I'm like, I gotta find out what bergamot. Sm- I want to smell like bergamot <laughs> if it's refreshing. There's, I don't know what. 
I don't yeah, know, but I want to try it. Really, yeah. It's yeah, you know what? Smell. It's known as the Prince of Citrus. <laughs> like, All right, I don't want any more. It's sunny and pleasant citrus scent. No, I it do. Is. It's uplifting. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. But with similar to lime, but with floral, herbal, and resinous undertones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just the teeniest bit. That's why it pairs uh, so well with other citrus things. Yeah. And other undertones. Melissa Longo, uh, where can people find you and your goodies online? <laughs> at melissa longo <laughs> on social media m-a-l-i-s-s-a and the introverted with at walking art made by melissa and walking art made by melissa on patreon there is a huge thing happening on patreon well for my the story that i'm working on um and i will hint that i've been learning some new software so that I can, um, yeah, upgrade my storytelling ability <laughs> and be more immersive into the world of of galleries where the story takes place. Cool. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, and I've been learning how to make donuts. So <laughs> that's where it starts. Uh, but, and then um, Three Fat Lobsters on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Very good. What kind of donuts, by the way? Is it the make my brown eyes blue? <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, Thank with you. sprinkles nice. and icing. And then I got to play around with color as far as Papers. icing and stuff and um, put it on a plate. I had to create my own plate. And yeah, these tutorials are really fun. And it's really making my brain go. I could do this and I could do this and I could do this, but I had to learn how to do this first. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. That's so cool. Yeah. Next will be Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Uh, I was mm-hmm. just thinking about that. I could probably do that. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> and make it turn <laughs> because it's 3D animation. So yeah. mm. <clears throat> uh, everybody, you can find me on twitter.com at ryan tg husk once again that's at ryan tg husk or just virtual trek con the seventh rule or falling tower on your favorite social media but especially right here on youtube what if we just moved to like tiktok how weird would that be would people still watch us or would be, be more people I mean, also, yeah. our, our TikToks for people are, on. are getting like tens of thousands of views every time now. But so are we. That said, I don't go on TikTok. Yeah. I'm on TikTok. It's awesome over there. I've never been there. Yeah, but, but people on TikTok will watch anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're moving to TikTok That's then, just, everybody. Oh See you there next week. What a deal. Ah. All right. Decision made. <laughs> uh, Won't they shadow ban to... us if we get too dirty, though? No. I don't know. Interesting. I don't want to find out. Worth it to find out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to kill all your fun right now, Ryan. <laughs> uh, th- thank you to Robert Kaiser, John Davis, Linda Andereg. Oh, the profanity. <laughs> That's you, Char. Yes, On it B, is. <laughs> uh, Dave Gregory. Bob D, did we already say? Um, uh, the Matt Boardman, War Dogheim, Portia, and everybody there. We appreciate all y'all. May Barello, Glenn Iverson, Lucia. Thanks for the fun, everybody. It's been a great time. We will see you next time. And hey, above all, have a chill weekend. Watching Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're going to be doing.